Hello everyone, welcome aboard Submarine Bakuna here at Independence Seaport Museum in Philadelphia. My name is Greg. Have you ever wondered how Bakuna's periscopes operate and what principles went into their design? Well today, we're going to find out. This is Subscience. The periscope is the eye of the submarine. Its purpose is to give the officer conning the boat a view of the horizon while his vessel remains submerged. In order to achieve this purpose, the periscope must be long enough to reach the surface of the water while also being inconspicuous enough to preserve the stealth and secrecy that is so integral to a submarine's successful operation. Bakuna has two periscopes, an attack scope and an observation scope. The observation scope has a wider field of vision, and the larger lens allows more light into the tube, making it more efficient at night. The attack scope, on the other hand, has a narrower profile, making it less noticeable to those on the surface as the submarine lines up for an attack. While the purpose of both scopes are different, the principles that guide their operation are more or less the same. At its most basic, a periscope is an optical instrument that uses a series of prisms, lenses, or mirrors in order to reflect an image through a tube. Light from a distant object strikes the mirror at the top of that periscope, which reflects that light 90 degrees down the tube. It then strikes the mirror at the bottom of the periscope and again reflects that light 90 degrees into the eye of the periscope operator. Bakuna's periscopes are much more complex than this, designed to include functions for magnification, angle adjustment for field of view, as well as a statometer for rangefinding, and integration into our radar system. However, for today's experiment, we'll only need to concern ourselves with the principle of reflecting light. Today, we're going to practically apply the principle of reflecting light in order to build our very own periscopes. To do this, the materials you will need are a long tube, we're using an empty Pringles can for ours, but your tube can be anything you want it to be, in whatever length you want it to be. Two mirrors, make sure that the mirrors match the size of your tube. You will need some scissors and some duct tape. The first thing you'll want to do is cut holes into your periscope, just like this. One will be where you place your eye to look through, and the other will let light into the tube. Make sure when you cut your holes that they're on opposite sides of your tube. It's a good idea to trace your holes out first before cutting them. Next, you want to insert your mirrors into the tube using the duct tape to secure them in place. You want to try to get your mirrors angled as close to 45 degrees as you possibly can so that they reflect the light at 90 degrees. A good way of telling if you've got the 45 degree angle is if you look at your mirror, can you see the other end of your tube? If you need to take the top off your tube or the bottom in order to better handle your mirrors and make sure they're right, that's more than okay. And that should do it. If you've built your periscope correctly, you should be able to see through it. This is an experiment that you can scale up as well. See if you can make your tube longer. Use larger mirrors, play with the size of your view holes. What happens if one is larger than the other? Once you've figured out your perfect scope, you can make your depth 60 feet and sweep the horizon. Well, that does it for this episode of Subscience. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by liking and sharing it. Then head down to the comment section and leave suggestions for topics you'd like to see us cover in future videos. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.